What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the First Revenge Story. I'm Nikki. This is episode one, the first official episode. If you haven't listened to the first intro episode, I would encourage you to listen to that. I think it kind of gives a lot of context and will make everything make sense. So go listen to that. It's only seven minutes, and then come back to this. This is going to be the first official episode. This is what all the episodes are going to look like from here on out, or some variation of this. It's Sunday morning right now. I think this is the best time to post the episode because it's kind of wrapping up my latest week and going into the next week. So it's perfect. I figured I could lay it out like I'm talking about general, generally what I'm working on. And then I can go over what I did in the week previous and then what I'm working on in the week upcoming. So I thought that would be the best way to organize it. If it's not, I'll just change it. But this is how I'm going to do the first episode. So yeah, if you listen to the intro episode, the one that I said was seven minutes, you probably have a lot of questions. I left it open on purpose, one, because I just wanted that to give context to what first offense means and everything, and two, I wanted you to be asking questions, so then you listen to this because you're interested in what's going on. So the way I ended the intro episode was I said, see you soon, Charlotte, the first offense story starts now. So unless you know me personally, you wouldn't understand why that's a big deal. So I'm going to tell you right now. So I live in West Springfield, Massachusetts right now. It's 750 miles away from Charlotte. And I'm not actually going to be moving to Charlotte specifically. I'm actually going to be moving to Mooresville. Mooresville is really close to Charlotte. And I knew if I said, see you soon, Mooresville, half the people listening would be like, where the hell is Mooresville? And just forget about it. And maybe half would look it up and be like, oh, it's way down near Charlotte so it's above Charlotte it's probably 30 minutes from Charlotte they're really close and then there's also this town called Concord that's really close to there I'm kind of close to Concord but in Mooresville in Concord and Mooresville have well over 60 NASCAR related shops and businesses I know Mooresville itself has over 60 and Concord is also loaded with a ton too and they have Charlotte Motor Speedway which is a track and then downtown Charlotte is where the NASCAR Hall of Fame is and a bunch more NASCAR related things so geographically I'm going to be surrounded by all that stuff I want to like go through specifically all the many reasons of why I'm moving down there but to give general context it's NASCAR is just going to be everywhere around me within 15 miles I can drive in a circle and I'll drive by NASCAR shops and just all kinds of different NASCAR things to do places to work just make videos and stuff for first offense and just do what I got to do to work on first offense basically what I'm saying is I'm going to have all the tools I need all right so before I talk about more of why Mooresville and all the advantages I just want to say like specifically where I'm going to be living all right so I knew when I decided I wanted to do this getting a lease on an apartment would be really hard because one I'm 21 and two I've just never done it I don't have experience and I knew it was going to be a ton of work so I started looking into it a little bit I have credit so I knew that would be on my side but then most of the apartments you have to lock into like a six month lease, 12 month lease. And since I know nothing about the area, I really didn't necessarily want to do this. And I was looking at all the different options of where I could live, like rooms for rent and apartments and just all kinds of different stuff. And then my brother actually suggested looking to long term Airbnbs, which I didn't even know was a thing. I like had vaguely seen it maybe. So my mom found this camper (laughs) and at first I thought it would be insane to live in but I I looked at the listing and it gives you like a list of all the amenities or whatever you call it and there's it had wi-fi laundry um a kitchen literally everything so finding an apartment with all this stuff for cheap or that's not like horrible was really tough so this is basically getting an apartment but it's on a camper so I think it's wicked undervalued I mean I've never lived in one so I could be completely wrong and I get down there and it's just horrible 
but basically it had everything I needed, which is Wi-Fi to make the podcast, um, a place to sleep, a place to make food because I can't just eat out 24-7, and then, yeah, just like a place to shower and everything. It it bypassed the getting a long-term lease as well, and it's temporary too. It's a little more expensive because I have to pay Airbnb fees, all that annoying stuff. But I ended up talking to the person and coming up with the idea to stay for three months, which the longer you stay, the cheaper the price you get. So that was good. And then I have an option to sign another lease, which is long term. So I just basically skipped having to go through a landlord, send a million applications and getting turned down because I don't know, whatever reason they don't trust that I'm going to pay for it because now I'm going to stay there for three months if I like it which I'm hoping it works really well I can sign a lease to stay in the camper and then it's gonna the price is gonna go down and then it'll also just buy me time to look around and maybe I find a apartment that I really like that I want to move into or if the camper is good enough I'll just stay for a while all right so the camper itself is just in someone's yard (laughs) my brother said it's like the most south southern thing just living in a camper in the back of someone's yard (laughs) but it's it's like down kind of in the area of mooresville where there's a lot of farms and just open land because mooresville has like a area where it just looks like an old downtown and then it's but it has a ton of businesses in it so it's kind of weird it has a little bit of everything and it's a big town and surrounding all that is just a ton of like farms and just open land so it's kind of out there but it's good because it's actually 15 it's like probably 10 to 12 minutes from downtown Mooresville but it's also 15 to 20 minutes away from Concord which like I said earlier there's a ton of NASCAR related things down there this this is perfect because if I try to get a job in Concord I only have a 15 20 minute drive but if I try to get a job in Mooresville, I only have a 10 to 15 minute drive rather than staying up, say, on top of Mooresville because Concord is below Mooresville. Then I might have a 30 to 40 minute drive to Concord if I end up with a job down there. So it doesn't limit me. I can pretty much work anywhere when I want to get a NASCAR, some kind of job at a shop or somewhere like that. All right, so yeah, that's I I think that's pretty much it for where I'm going to be living, just camp just the first or fence camper on a little tiny side street in the middle of Mooresville. Another cool thing about it too though is it is I think 1.7 or 1.3 miles away from Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, which isn't it's not called that anymore. It's called the Dale Earnhardt Foundation and I haven't looked into it a ton. I've just looked through the pictures on Google Maps, and it's basically a museum now. All his championship trophies are there, his cars. So since it's only a three-minute car ride, I'll probably go there two, three times, two, three times a day. <laughs> I actually might work on trying to get a job there because it's so close that I it would save me so much money in gas, and it would just be really cool to be around all the time. I could probably make a ton of videos for First or Fence and meet a ton of people through it as well. So I'll definitely look into that. All right, so I would say the next question is probably how am I going to do this? Like, how am I going to just move across the country and figure out how to pay my bills, still do the podcast, just and just live? Because I've never done it. I'm living with my mom right now. So I thought the best way to do it was to just figure out as much possible stuff to have lined up before I even get there. Because the more stuff I have to figure out how to do and just to get done in general. Because when you move, there's just so much to do. Like, especially into another state, health insurance, your license, registering your vehicle, finding a place to live, finding a place to make money, car insurance, getting Wi-Fi, getting a new cell phone plan I think I might have to do. Uh, What else? laundry just there's a million trillion things so the another thing I wanted to line up before I got there is some kind of a job where I can just I know that I'm gonna have the money coming in because I don't want to just start blowing all my 
backup money because I'm going to need that for when everything goes wrong, like when my truck just explodes one day. I thought that if I worked at a huge company, one that has buildings pretty much all over the place, I would be able to transfer. And I just started reading about it, FedEx, UPS, I don't know, there's a bunch. And I wanted to come up with a way to tr to get a job there and just start to talk to the managers, figure out if I can transfer and then line it up and transfer to a location really close to where I wanted to go. So it actually worked out pretty perfect. I mean, it couldn't have gone any better as long as everything goes to plan. So I, I got this job at FedEx in Chicopee, Massachusetts, if you don't know. And it's part time in the mornings, but I requested the transfer papers and it turns out that there's a hub, a FedEx hub, I think it's called, in Concord, so it's a lot bigger, which is just gives more opportunity for jobs. And then the other thing, too, is it's 15, it's like 15 to 18 minutes away from my camper, which is actually less than what I drive to work right now. So it's pretty close. I mean, you can't really complain about 15, 18 minutes. That's pretty much how it goes. I'm going to be working more, too, so... It's not like I'll be going back and forth for just a four-hour shift. And I haven't figured out everything with it. I've talked to the like HR lady a little bit, and she's going to get me the papers. But hopefully I can have a week to get set up when I get down there, and then I immediately start working at FedEx and getting just a weekly paycheck and just figuring out how to maintain my living expenses and put a little money to the side and start saving so obviously that's what i want to do save money so i can put it into first or fence and start eventually making money on first or fence that's the long-term goal i mean it'd be awesome if i could get a job related to nascar before i even get down there i'm definitely gonna apply to some like there's some jobs all i mean there's a million jobs you can apply to and I think it's possible for me to get a job before I get down there. It's just going to be tough, and I can't rely on that. I'm basically, I'm just preparing for the worst to happen and hoping for the best. That's the best, that's what I have to do here. Because I just, I don't, I need to give myself enough time to get settled and then be able to stay and not have to end up coming home because that would just defeat the whole purpose. So I'm FedExing it up. I'm representing Denny. Hamlin. We got that win at Kansas. Alright, I forgot to mention when I'm going to be leaving. That's I don't know how I left that out. So, it's Sunday right now, June... I mean, May 14th, I want to say. So, I'm leaving in four weeks from tomorrow. And I'm probably going to leave in the middle of the night. So, I have... After today, I have four weeks. And then, it's over for me. I'm out. So, I have just a huge list of things to get done and there's so much stuff that I can't even get done until I get down there, which sucks because it's just going to make it stressful trying to find my way around and get that stuff done. I mean, that's just how it goes with moving. There's just a lot of stuff to do. But at least I'm lining up as much stuff as I possibly can now and this podcast is good because it's it's kind of organizing all the things I have to do because I'm writing it down and then talking about it so it's like organizing it for me and I'm not getting overwhelmed by it and I can just do a little bit each week all right so to summarize what we got so far I'm living in a camper in the middle of nowhere in Mooresville I'm working at FedEx to afford everything I'm leaving in four weeks and I might try to get a NASCAR job well I'm going to try to get a job related to NASCAR before I even get there but I'm not counting on it. So Mooresville, four weeks. FedEx, camper. The first defense facility, camper. <laughs> I'm going to talk about all this stuff as it comes closer. So I don't need to get too in detail right now. And I also don't even know everything about it. So that, I think, lays it out pretty well. There's a, there's a week off of NASCAR once I get down there. So that's good because I won't have to be making a million Instagram posts for first defense and... I will have to do the podcast, but then I'll have a week off. I'll be able to relax, not relax, but not be overwhelmed by having to do stuff while settling to a new place of living. All right, so before I talk about what I did this week, I just want to talk about a few other things. So another 
something that's like super on my mind is just the worst possible occasion situations taking place and the biggest one would be that i get there i don't know anybody except for the person i'm renting the camper from and a few other people i met on instagram like his name's a pit marine he's on he's a tire changer he lives around there and just a few others but none that i'm really have a that good of a connection with so my worst kit my biggest fear is that I get there and my truck just blows up <laughs> or something. I don't have a vehicle. My backup plan to this is to quit my job at FedEx and try to, in well, if I can't get a ride there, which would be tough, I'm going to quit my job at FedEx, work at the Walmart that's like a mile away because I won't have to pay for gas, I won't have to pay for car insurance, and then just save my money and build it up and then just I'll have to try to figure out a vehicle so yeah I don't know if anything can really go worse than that but I bet it can because I just said that so I just the I just want to be able to stay there because I know that I can make it I just need to get through the first initial part which I've never done this so that's where you can I think be naive and then get caught off guard and then all of a sudden I'm back here so I'm going max preparation. If I'm missing anything, let me know if there's something you can think of. All right, so I hope I laid everything out pretty good. I'm going to get more into details as I get closer. Like, I'll know more about working at FedEx and what my hours will be. I just, everything. So now I want to just talk about what I did this week, like all the steps I'm taking. So this week, the biggest thing I've been working on is trying to sell some things I have around here that way it's not here so it's not in everyone's way and because if I have a little bit of money saved up then that's going to be good to get me for the through the first few months of just getting settled so I had this quarter midget if you don't know what it is it's like a it's like a small race car it's like a quarter of a race car it's a vintage one it's from the 50s that I bought to sell a while ago and I also had this go-kart which is the same brand they're both off yet it's a company in New York that built like go-karts quarter midgets stuff like that in the 50s 60s I think I'm not sure when they stopped but anyways I wanted to sell the quarter midget and I had this go-kart that I kind of wanted to keep and have restored or restore myself and then put it in the first or fence studio eventually whenever I get a studio or building and I sold the quarter midget to this guy and he was like do you have a any other off yet things and I was like oh yeah I have this go-kart and I'm not planning on selling it but I'll take offers of course and if the offer is right I guess I'll I'll sell it so I knew it was super rare because I've seen like one other and it was destroyed and missing all the really good parts that you need and that would pretty much make it worthless so it has all the parts and I figured the guy would offer me a good amount but probably still not enough for me to take the offer but he ended up offering me four and a half times what I paid for it so I had to take it I worked it into a deal well he offered me four times what I paid for it and I knew this guy really wanted it so I ended up getting a little more I got the other half so four and a half what I paid for it and this was worked out good too because now I don't have to ship them he decided he's going to pick them both up rather than me shipping the quarter midget which I've never shipped something that huge that would have took a lot of time and effort to figure out so that was good that was probably might have been the biggest win of the week um I, I've been selling on eBay I didn't talk about this but I have an eBay store and I've been selling on it I've probably sold something every single day for the past year or at least one item not every day maybe there's a few gaps but I've sold at least probably five ten things a week for the last year when in some some weeks I've been I've sold 50 to 60 items but I've haven't been running the eBay store like I usually do usually I go all in on it and list eight ten things a day and I've actually had the eBay store running well enough to where I could probably make more on it than working at FedEx. But it takes a lot of thinking and it's risky. So I can't really be doing that in North Carolina until I get settled down, which I'm going to work the eBay 
and it's called the Nikki outlet. I'm going to work the Nikki outlet into part of my income because that's going to free me up some time to focus on first or fence. I just got to make sure I can get it all set up. So I've been selling off the inventory with that. I've been listing two items a day and selling an item or two a day. Once I get all the inventory listed and sold, that's going to have to be shut off until I get to more zone and get settled. And I really want to get it set up because I can be driving home from work, see a tag sale, run into the tag sale, buy something for 50 cents, sell it for 30, 40, 50, 10 bucks, whatever. I can make money on it really quickly without having to expend too much energy and just brain power, I guess. I had a few other little things I was selling, nothing too major to talk about. Just random stuff laying around, putting it on Facebook Marketplace. Another thing I did was I got the transfer papers from work while I requested them and just let everyone know there, considering it's a month. Uh, so I'm getting that in action. I, I got to get the job situation figured out. That'll take a big weight off my chest, knowing my hours. It'll allow me to start scheduling myself what my days and weeks are going to look like once I'm down there. I'm going to have to give up some stuff for sure. I mean, as long as I can watch the race on Sunday or record it and watch it and then make the NASCAR podcast and then get all my content up like my Instagram reels, Instagram posts, and then make this podcast that I'm making right now and then that's all that matters. I just need to do that and then make enough money to pay for everything. So it'd be really helpful if I could figure out which hours I'm going to be working because then I can lay out when I'm going to do all the other stuff. And then another thing I've been working on here and there is just calculating bills and trying to cut some expenses like unnecessary subscriptions and just stupid stuff like that. There's no point in waiting till I get down there and start scrounging and being an idiot. And then one more thing I've been working on here and there is I've just been trying to make my resume better and just looking up jobs and I made like a LinkedIn and everything because you can apply to jobs through that. I haven't been putting too much time into this because I know in reality the way I'm going to get the job that I want is I'm going to be need to be down there and get face to face with someone and just basically sell myself because I, I saw something saying that the average resume takes like six seconds for somebody go, to go through. So really I just need to make a resume that catches someone at, someone's attention and gets me an interview and then I'll just sell myself in the interview. So yeah, I've been just working on that and then obviously doing my normal first or fence stuff. I'm just trying to make habits of just getting this stuff done so then when I get there it just all goes easy. So I think that recaps what I did this week. Just working on this podcast a lot, thinking about how to lay this out and how to just talk about everything that goes into moving. And there's so many details. I I basically just want to do what I normally do except use this podcast to basically put all the things that is going into this into, I guess, like document it that way because I think it's interesting for people to listen to and the bigger thing is really because I can look back in 10 years and just look at what I was doing what I was thinking about and that'll be cool so yeah and it's just the first offense story I am explaining in a podcast what first offense means and how I'm doing it all right so now I'm going to talk about what I'm doing this week so it's Sunday right now I'm watching the race today, obviously, but then and doing some other things like making this podcast, but the real work starts tomorrow. So I'm going to keep selling stuff. I have a plow that I need to sell, and I think my plan for that is to just test it, make sure everything's working right. I was originally going to try to sell it as a package with the truck side, like the truck mount and the wiring and everything, and try to get a little more money, but I think... Uh, I don't know it might be tough it's a horrible time of year I messed up not selling this in the winter so I'm kind of paying the price now but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test and make sure everything's working right put it on eBay because you can get so many views on eBay put it on an auction maybe with a buy it now sell it that way just get the money 
it's out of my head, out of sight, out of mind. Then I gotta continue selling my eBay inventory. I'm gonna be lowering prices, so go on the Nikki L and buy some stuff. I'm condensing some of the listings into lots, so just a little less money, but I'll just get it done, sold, ship it, it's over with. And then just a few other random things I gotta sell. And then I just got a ton of stuff to do with the moving of another state, like health insurance. I have to notify my health insurance to see if I'm still covered, I think. And then I also need to, I have I have two. One of them I need to like go on the, um, like the marketplace or whatever in North Carolina, I think. But I mean, you don't even need health insurance in North Carolina like you do in Massachusetts. It's five, I looked it up, there's five states that require and North Carolina isn't one of them. And I think if there's a lapse in your coverage, in Massachusetts like if for some part of the year you don't have health insurance you get a penalty because you have to report it on your taxes so I'm thinking I I mean I like are there people without I mean I know there obviously is but how dumb is it to not have health insurance it's, I don't know I gotta figure that out I think it'd probably be insane for me to not have health insurance right like if I flip my truck or something so I can definitely get that figured that out. That'll be another thing off the the mega list, the mega moving list. I need to get the transfer papers figured out for FedEx. Um, truck insurance, I looked into that. I basically have to keep my current insurance, and then when I get down there, change my license, right, all that stuff. That's all going to be done together. For my registration and everything, I just need to get my license, prove my residency, and I think the way I'm going to do that is through the insurance because I'm going to purchase Geico once I get down there, and then I'll have like a bill, and also I'll have liability insurance in North Carolina, and then I can schedule like a thingy at the DMV, get that taken care of. That'll probably be, I don't know, two weeks to a month. After I move, I'll get that stuff taken care of. It's it's going to be weighing on me, so I want to get it out of the way quickly. But for now, I can just research it and make sure I have everything lined up so it goes pretty smoothly. And then another thing I'm going to do is make a schedule for first offense of just basically the all the posts I do each day. So like Thursday, I have this NASCAR ones to watch post I do, like the best drivers at the upcoming track. So I'm just going to lay that all out so I can look at it and make sure that I'm getting all that stuff done each week. And I have some few other things that aren't mandatory that I have to get done, like I'm going to apply to some NASCAR jobs. I can apply to be a NASCAR technical inspector. I'm definitely going to apply for that. That would be cool to inspect the cars. There's a bunch. There's, I mean, a lot of them require a college degree. Uh like a four-year degree but there's also a ton that I would be good at and I mean I think I would be good at the ones that require a degree too but they might not even accept my application I'll apply to it anyways yeah so there's a ton that don't even require that and I'm gonna apply to all those I'll apply to jobs at the race teams and I mean if I could get a job before I get there on a team that would be awesome because it would just it would immediately make it so I have so much more to talk about on my NASCAR podcast because I'll be so much more into it and I would be happier to work there like I mean I, I like working at FedEx because I know it's part of the first offense story like I have to do it it's just I mean the people there just look like they want to kill me um <laughs> it's just like a dark warehouse loud it's just like I mean it's not ideal I just I mean I'll I'll happily work there I don't care job's a job I'm just grinding it out but of course a racing related job would be better so I'll see what I can do with that and I think that's pretty much it for this week there's gonna be a bunch more that I end up doing that I'll talk about in next Sunday's podcast but I hope I laid everything out pretty well. I'm just working on moving camper. I can't wait. Little tiny camper. It's going to be awesome. I'm just going to make it my workshop because I'm just going to 
there's like five beds in it. There's little beds in every corner. I'm just going to take them out and make it so it's just like the mattress or whatever because I think it's just like plywood. And then I'm going to make storage in there. I'm going to set up the Nikki outlet, my eBay in one of the corners. I'm going to have my podcast set up. So I'm just it's going to be a workshop on wheels. It's going to be sick. I really hope everything works well with it, like the Wi-Fi. But can only know until I get there, and I'll figure it out if it doesn't. I think since I talked about the camera, I definitely got to show it. Show that beast on my Instagram or something. So go on there and check it out. I'll post it. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it. We're four weeks out. going to only be three weeks out after next, when I make this podcast next week. It's going to be crazy. I hope I can get everything done this week. And I will, because I got to. Next week, I'll probably talk more about just living on my own and everything and just more steps that I'm going to take once I get down there to I just do what I got to do. All right. I hope you guys like this episode. If you made it this far, I appreciate it a ton, and I hope you were entertained. If you give me feedback on what was interesting, what was just dumb, then I'll definitely change it. I mean, I'm doing this for myself, but also I don't need to talk about certain things and I can focus my attention on other stuff too when I do it. So please give me feedback. I'll appreciate it. And yeah, 28 days left of comfort and then it's grind time. My life begins officially. I hope you guys like this episode. I'm going to listen to it and write down all the details I missed and fill you in next week so yeah the first offense story continues next sunday hope everyone has a good week grind hard and peace